I'ma keep it a bean. Stick to the script every scene. This from last year, but they clean. Say to say, I'ma take some else, but it's winning team. Charlie Sheen, fam gang, the regime. I'm from Piney Green. What's goody, Sheltron here. You can call me Shells, and I'm back out again with a brand new video. And today, I want to talk about something that happened at the very end of this Panthers and Falcons game, post game in the locker room. We saw Dante Jackson, cornerback of the Panthers, talk about a play, talk about a couple plays that happened in the game, but one play specifically, he broke down and talked about um, a 93-yard touchdown that he gave up to a player named Zacchaeus. It was his very first NFL touchdown. It might have been his very first NFL reception, and he talked about a few things there. I don't want to go ahead and misquote him, so I'll let him talk, let him give his full quote on what happened here. You can see it. Right here. We went over that. We never played that call in that situation. Backed up third, third and long, third and medium, third and seven. We sent everybody left the corners out, and the ball was post was thrown from. He was right here. The post was thrown on the opposite edge. So I was beat. I was beat from the start. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Banzai. It was a zero blitz, and just a bad call, man. Just, just wasn't smart football in that in that um, situation. You know, that play we really needed, and I, I do have to make that tackle. I have to finish that play, but. No excuses. You heard the man right there, Dante Jackson, criticizing the coaches and criticizing the play call on third and eight on the opponent's seven. He said they sent everybody bonsai, zero coverage, which means there's no help over the top. Corners are playing man coverage. There's no safety help. On top of that, but y'all know me, when I hear things in post game pressers, I like to get the receipt. I gotta know if what I'm hearing and what I'm seeing are the same things. So let's go and look at the play here and see just what Dante was talking about. Keep in mind, he said, zero blitz, no help, corners left by themselves, and he was left on an island against a receiver where the ball was thrown to the opposite hash on a post route. Right here on your screen, you see the play right when the ball was snapped. There's a few things to notice here. I'm going to break down the things that are happening on the field right here, right when the ball was snapped. The first thing to notice, this ball was snapped on the left hash. Right on the left hash, you can see Matt Ryan is back here. He gets the ball on top of the left hash. And what we see from the Panthers is, what I'm thinking is a 2-4-5 formation. What we're looking at is two down linemen. That's gonna be Gerald McCoy and uh, Vernon Butler. You have four linebackers. That's what I think is Bruce Irvin, Shaq Thompson. We have Luke in the middle, uh, right in the, on the left hash right there, right ahead of the uh, 10 yard line at the 11. And then there is Andre Smith on the uh, on the far left on the on the right hash for the offense, just standing straight up. And then there are five defensive backs going from bottom to top of the field. Uh, you see that number twenty six is Dante Jackson right for the one of the ten yard line. There's uh, Trey Boston who will be blitzing. There's Eric Reed right in front of the, uh, the the first down marker. Then there are two guys at the top of your screen. The guy who's closer to the first down marker on top over the 10-yard uh, line, that is Ross Cockrell. And the player who's underneath the 10-yard line, top most of the screen, is James Bradbury. Now for the, the Falcons' offense, let's see what's going to happen here. Right now you see there are four receivers. Well, three receivers and Austin Hooper's like in a flex position. What's happening here is going from the top of the screen to the bottom, the player at the very top for the Falcons is going to run a slant. The player in the slot position is going to run a post. And that route right there is going to be important because I want to talk about the difference between a post and what Dante Jackson is out there defending against. And Austin Hooper in the flex is going to stay for a little bit and block. And he's going to release out to the flat and draw Eric Reed's coverage. And the only other person on the route is Zacchaeus, who starts off, as you can see, inside the numbers. They are on the close side of the field, on the close side of the hashes. He is inside the numbers, so he's still playing slot. He's still inside, very close to where the ball is snapped. It's very important to note where Zacchaeus is when the ball is snapped and where he is later on in this video. So like I said, uh, the player on the outside, on the, at the very top, running a slant, that's James Bradbury's coverage. The player in the slot running the post, that's Ross Cockle's coverage. Austin Hooper, or who I assume is Austin Hooper, but the tight end who's going to the flat, that is Eric Reed's coverage. And Zacchaeus is Dante Jackson's. Keep that in mind. So we see when the ball is snapped. Matt Ryan gets it. Drops straight back down on the left hash. You can see we send seven players. That means four players are back in man coverage. It's not an engage eight. So it's not a terrible, terrible play. But sending seven on third and eight at the opponent's seven 
doesn't seem to be the worst idea. So let's go ahead and move on with this play here. What you're going to see here is Matt Ryan throws this ball. And I will admit that some players do leave the frame. This is an all 22 film, but it's very, very obvious what happens, what route each of these guys goes on, judging from where they start and where you see them break on the ball. And at the very top of this play here, what we noticed is when Zacchaeus is getting this ball, he has not moved at all. Now, Dante Jackson said he ran a post. What he said specifically was the ball was thrown to the opposite hash. He was right here. The post was thrown on the opposite hash. Now, you tell me, I'm not a football surgeon. I don't know. But you tell me just how far this man Zacchaeus moved from where he was lined up pre-snap to where he caught the ball. Because to my eyes, and I don't have perfect vision, but the ball was snapped on the left hash and Zacchaeus caught the ball between the numbers and that left hash, the close hash, the hash where the ball was actually snapped. But we were told a different thing. He was right here, the post was thrown on the opposite hash. He was right here, the post was thrown on the opposite hash. He was right here, the post was thrown on the opposite hash. But post streak, whatever route you think this is, you'll notice two things here. One, Dante Jackson was beat way before his man even went on any kind of break. And honestly, if the ball was thrown at the seven yard line, and we get to the 40, at, at what point have you ever seen anyone run a post where they run 33 yards up the field and then break on that cut? You will have never and you will never see a post route where someone runs 30 plus yards and then breaks. This is a streak all the way. Let's go ahead and stop calling it a post. But moving on past that, the second thing you notice here is that this ball is underthrown. On a looper, you're going to see Zacchaeus has to break his stride. He has to slow down, giving Dante Jackson more time to get there. Matt Ryan throws his ball straight. He doesn't lead Zacchaeus. He throws this ball straight down the left hash line. Zacchaeus has to break his stride, slow down, catch the ball. And then the next thing you'll notice, I said you have to notice two things. There's a surprise bonus third thing that is three for the price of two. Dante Jackson has an opportunity to turn a bad play into a decent play. From the seven to the 51, that's a 44 yard reception. It's bad, but at the very least, it's not a touchdown and it's not even close to the red zone or the end zone, the goal line, whatever. Even after this man, Dante Jackson gets beat, gets an opportunity to make a play on the ball because the receiver has to slow down because the ball is underthrown. Dante Jackson has an opportunity to make this tackle. He misses, he whiffs, on the tackle. He almost kind of gets ran over. I mean, he tries to get him over the top with his shoulder and then he tries to grab at Zacchaeus' legs as he falls down. So he had, I would call it maybe one and a half opportunities. The pass is caught before the hash. Dante tries to grab at his outside shoulder or it's actually his inside shoulder. Misses that one, slides off, comes back around and he has a chance to go after his legs and he misses that too. Maybe it wasn't the best play to call in that situation and maybe the coaches never call that situation in practice but we can't just go ahead and say you know what hey that's on the coaches that's bad coaching maybe maybe Dante was right there the dude got beat Dante Jackson got beat on a streak by a player who's never even touched the field before this isn't about me not liking Dante Jackson I wish Dante Jackson would have got a pick on this play. I wish Dante Jackson wouldn't get tricked so often. I wish Dante Jackson's coverage was actually somewhat consistent. I don't want to not like him. I don't have anything personal against Dante Jackson. But the fact of the matter is, if I see one thing and then I hear someone talk about another thing, I'm going to look and compare the two and see which one's right. And then when you call out the coaching staff for a play call, where literally all your job was to do was don't get beat deep by a no-name player who has no receptions, it's kind of hard for me to really be all that sympathetic to what you're talking about when you get burnt a lot. I'm getting kind of tired of hearing the excuses, bro. You let me know what you saw. That's how I feel about it. Let me know all your thoughts in the comments below. And you already know to do with that like button. Cheers to you. Appreciate the chance. Being told y'all I been the man. Being told y'all I had the gift. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Real ones gonna recommend. Count this as another win.